I would like to give the floor to the permanent representative of Ghana. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Congratulations to you on your election as the chair of the third committee for the 75th session and to the members of your bureau. You can count on Ghana's support. Ghana aligns herself with a statement delivered on behalf of the African group by Egypt, as well as the group of 77 in China by Guyana. We are gratified that despite the constraints posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, we are able to meet in person to consider the important agenda of the third committee especially in a year that commemorates the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the 25th year of the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action. Madam Chair, the outcome of the Fourth World Conference on Women in 1995 marked a defining moment in history and represented a global commitment to realizing the full potential of women and girls through the elimination of systemic and structural barriers that hinder gender equality and women's empowerment. We commend and celebrate the successes achieved on several fronts, despite the slow pace of implementation in some areas. It is evident that daunting challenges and gaps remain, and we run a real risk of regression in gains made, as demonstrated by the current COVID-19 pandemic, which has called attention to persistent inequalities and barriers to women's empowerment, and the unacceptable reality of women's continued vulnerability to violence. We therefore welcome the call by the Secretary General for member states to ensure that COVID-19 response and recovery plans address the gender impacts of the pandemic. Women must participate equally in decision-making in these efforts and must occupy a central place in national development planning to guarantee resilience and sustainability. Madam Chair, significant progress has been made in Ghana in advancing gender equality and women's empowerment across all 12 critical areas of the Beijing Platform for Action. In fulfillment of Ghana's commitment, successive governments in the past 25 years have taken steps to enact legislative and constitutional instruments and to formulate corresponding national frameworks, including the National Gender Policy and its Strategic Plan, which together provide a comprehensive blueprint for addressing inequalities, gender mainstreaming, and women's empowerment into Ghana's development efforts. The successes caught so far include institutional changes that have been achieved over the period, the increase in female political appointments, gender parity in education, and increase in the quality of reproductive health care for women, as evidenced in the steady reduction of maternal mortality. Beyond these achievements, the Government of Ghana continues to initiate and implement various social development programs and interventions that are aimed at addressing women's vulnerabilities. Violence against women and girls, which is largely fueled by socio-cultural practices and beliefs, remains a critical area for, of concern for Ghana. The Domestic Violence Secretariat of the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection continues to provide the policy guidance on steps being taken to address this phenomenon, in tandem with the Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit, which has the mandate to prevent, investigate, and prosecute all cases involving domestic violence, gender-based violence, and child abuse. Madam Chair, the Government of Ghana continues to make steady progress in the promotion and protection of the rights of the child. National policy interventions in several sectors have been specifically targeted to improve the lives of children and to address their developmental needs for a better future. Medical care for children at birth has improved considerably over the last five years. Additionally, the Government of Ghana has made significant headway in making education accessible to all children. These efforts have led to the attainment of gender parity in education, particularly at the lower educational levels. Ghana also remains committed to leaving no stone unturned in efforts to tackle sexual abuse of children and child trafficking in fulfillment of our obligations under the Convention on the Rights of the Child, eliminating harmful cultural practices such as female genital mutilation and child marriage also remains a priority. Ghana recognizes that national legislation in these efforts must be complemented by social engagement and education and is consequently implementing appropriate strategies, including, including a national strategic framework on ending child marriage with an operational plan and the convening of national dialogues with major stakeholders, including traditional leaders and the media. 
Madam Chair, Excellencies, as we celebrate 75 years of the UN's existence, we must reaffirm our commitment to the promotion and protection of universal human rights as one of the foundational pillars of the organization. In view of the importance of human rights for peace, security, and sustainable development, there is an even more compelling case for strengthened dialogue among member states on measures that will help to advance accession to human rights treaties and to their speedy implementation if we are to leave no one behind. Please we, repeat up, Ambassador. We welcome in this regard the recommendations contained in the report of the just-ended review of the human rights treaty bodies. In conclusion, Madam Chair, Ghana wishes to reiterate its commitment to the promotion and respect for human rights of all persons. We support the promotion of global commitment and wish to advocate in this regard the principles of cooperation and genuine dialogue aimed at strengthening institutional capacity of member states to comply with their regulations. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your statements.